Welcome to another Tableau tutorial video. This is the second in a series about paths. This is going to be creating another starburst with existing data. In Paths 101, we talked a little bit about how to create uh, different line charts, spider charts. Here's where it gets a little more complicated. That data was already structured the way we wanted it. Now we want to do something similar, a starburst, with the sample store, sample superstore data. We, it's not always set up the way we want it. First, we have to look at the math behind what we're going to be trying to create. We're going to be creating a starburst, and we're going to start at zero. We need to calculate the angle so that we can figure out the point for each of the states. This is uh, some of the trin trigonometry that you're going to need to look at. We're looking at the cosine of the angle, which is AA. That's going to give you your times the hypotenuse. That's going to give you your height. That's going to give you the Y value. Now, the sine of the angle, AA times the hypotenuse, is going to give you the X value. Now the angle is going to be calculated by taking 2 times pi times the current number, the index value. You know, if you have 50, are you at number 1, number 2, number 20? So the current number, and then divided by the number of items in the whole uh, data series. I got this math from John Ledbetter on overstackoverflow.com. Over, uh, stack so we're ready to get started. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to identify a start and a stop point for each state. The easiest way to do that, we're going to call this start and end. So we're going to say if the minimum, if the order ID, each all these are order IDs, so if the order ID is equal to, and this is going to be a fixed function, fixed state what this is saying is for every state we're going to we're going to ignore the filters and we're just looking at it state by state we want the minimum order ID. And this actually will work even if it is not a number, if it's a combination of both, it'll work. So it is saying if the order ID equals the smallest or the minimum order ID for a particular state, then we're gonna say that is the start. We're gonna call that start. Else, we're gonna say it's an end. This formula will give us, for each state, it's going to give us a start value and an end value, which is what we're going to need. Now, the other thing that we're going to need is we're going to need a state index. And this is just going to be an index function so that we can keep kind of a counter so we know what state we're on. And rather than the default calculation, we're going to want this to compute using state so that it's actually done by which state. Now, the other thing, let me just show you what we're going to need to do here. I'm going to pull over state and start and stop. And this is going to be important. This is always helpful. I didn't delete that one already. This is always helpful to set the table up like this before you create the graph. We're going to bring the state index over. Um, let's undo that. We'll just drop that into here. And that's what we want to see. We want to see that the end and the start both have the same number. Now, we're going to create the x value. 
So if start and stop equals the end point or the start, then the x value is just going to be zero. Else, this is going to be where it gets a little bit confusing. I've actually written this down on a separate piece of paper so that I have it handy, so I'm cheating a little bit. So we want it to be the sign, S-I-N, and here's where we're going to put in the, in the angle, right? So we're going to take 2 times pi times the state index, and we're going to divide that. I've already done this before. The states, there's not quite 50, there's 49. If not, if you didn't have that information already, then you would probably need to do another calculation to come up with that value. All right, I think that's going to do it. And then we want it to be times the hypotenuse, the length, so that the ones, the states with the most sales have the longest line. So we're going to actually have to The issue that we're going to come up with this, well, there's a couple things, is we have aggregate and non-aggregate. So the easy way to do this, you can just add this, the min, it's an aggregate function, and it kind of tricks Tableau into thinking, oh, okay, it's an aggregate function. Of course, if you have start and stop, each row is going, to, you can be uh, min or max. Each row, the min or max is going to be the min or max. It's going to be that value. Um, we also need to do something here. This is actually, because we're splitting uh, orders between end and start, we're going to just hit OK for now. And we're going to create a new field, new fixed field called state, state sales. This is going to be another fixed function because we want we want all the state sales, sum of sales, regardless if it is the end point or the start point. So sales start, and then we're going to come back here. Should have blown that up for you. And so then we're going to change this to state sales. Okay, it's still coming in with a function, a problem. Aggregate, non-aggregate. So we will just add same thing to here. And the reason is this state index is a table calculation. And so it's an aggregate function and so we need to make these other items aggregate functions as well and so this is an easy way to do it the tricks tableau so we have okay and then we're going to duplicate that and then we're going to come in here and edit then we make this equal to y we're going to make this equal to cosine Okay, and let's make sure the sales, bring in the X and the Y here, X and Y, and so what you've got here is you have the start is zero, that's what we want, we want it to radiate from the center. If for some reason you had a different start point, you would just add that plus that uh, that value to the calculations that we had there. This is what we want. So we'll come here. We'll grab the x and the y. 
And the reason it's still giving you a red is because It's calculating, if you remember, it's going off of the state index, and it's going off of state, but state's not in there yet. So you bring in state. So now we've got what we wanted, or at least a lot of data points. Change that to line. That's not what we want. So we need the start, stop. I'm going to bring that over. I'm going to get this wrong. I know it. To path. And just to confirm it. You got Arizona, can't really see it. California, these are, should all be, they should all be alphabetical. There you go. And then if you get rid of some of these items, and then if you got rid of the grid lines, one minute. From here, get rid of the grid lines. And to make it a little more exciting, we'll bring in uh, maybe we'll bring in profit to size. You can start to see ones that are a little more profitable. If you wanted to differentiate it even more, you could bring the state into color then it gets a little bit too messy but that's how you would create a starburst off of existing data in this case the sample store set let me know if you have any questions i'd be happy to answer them thanks again to john ledbetter and stackoverflow.com